Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for checking into another one of my videos. This one is going to go back to the roots a little bit. It's going to be an absolute long burner. Uh, we are going to fully take apart this. This is the Redline Mini SFR. This is my go-to regulator. It's the only regulator I have. Um, I bought this because it was small, um, where my ballistic regulator wasn't so small. And I wanted something to fit in my bag pretty nicely. So this fits that bill absolutely perfectly. However, what this has started doing, which the ballistic regulator hasn't done, is it started creeping the pressure. So creeping pressure is where if I set it to, say, 80 degrees throughout the course of the day, the needle will just slowly go up. And obviously, if I'm pulling the um, pulling the trigger at people, uh, that that pressure of the BB is going up, the shots are going to go off a bit, they're going to have some irregular shots. So um, this is something I did off camera a, while, um, you know, a few weeks ago, and it just doesn't seem to have worked. I've since been in touch with my retailer, who don't supply the rebuild kits for these things. They supply the things, they don't do the rebuild kits for them, but they assure me that if I strip it, clean it, put it back together properly, it will be absolutely fine. So I have looked into this a little bit further. I think I know which bits to do and which bits to get. Uh, so I'm going to basically take it apart on camera for you and, and just waffle on as I go. So, first thing that you've just seen me doing there, uh, clean workspace. Um, alcoholic wipes, one of these things, one of these first aid, fast aid things. Uh, give it a bit of a clean off, and then uh, we are ready to go. So, the main tool which I'm going to be using here is the Allen key, which comes with it. That just takes the top two pieces off. The tutorial says you need some long nose pliers. You also need a spannery job socket thing. This is an 8mm version. I'm sure I used this last time because it kind of worked. Um, if it doesn't, I'll have to pause the video, go get it, come back. Um, and then I've got some Tecti gun sav as well, which I bought specifically for this purpose. Now, I do have some other tools as well, my punchers. Um, although you don't need to punch anything out with these, there is a stack of shims, which if you just sit them on a punch, you can just tip them all out in one. Makes a nice clean job of it. So, uh, let's get going. Let's fix this bloody thing once and for all. So top cap off. Uh, I am do trying to do this from memory as well. So um, yeah, it's a little bit dirty on there. Uh, what I will probably do is I will strip it and then clean it, relube it, put it back together as we go. So feel free to point out the bits that I miss as we go. So I'm just going to drop my Allen key in there and then just turn this out. This was already quite far out to be fair really quite aggravated about this my ballistic reg lasted over a year so with little to no maintenance this thing's done three months and it's already screaming out so that is quite dirty in those threads i'm not convinced it's that dirt which is actually causing me these problems but we're probably gonna have to swab some of this out so then you get to the shim stack so the shim stack is one of the problems. So this is the bit that you don't want to screw up. If you screw this bit up, it's okay. You just have to read the manual and you have to take probably what's going to feel like an eternity rebuilding the shim stack. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my punch on this end silver pin and then I'm going to tip it upside down and the shim stack comes out. So all I've got to do now, there's one shim left on there, which is obviously stuck to the grease. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that to one side, just prop it up slightly. Right, that came out. I'm going to get that like that. I can get my stack of shims, pop it on there, and then I'm just putting it off camera here. Um, which is where my punch kind of roll is and I'm just putting the end of it in so that they don't go anywhere. So then the next step once you've done that is you've kind of shown out this pin is you have to remove the pin. So long nose pliers in. And then the pin should just pull out. So 
pin is out. So that O-ring is in. That's pretty nicely sealing. There is quite a bit of gunk around that. I'm just going to put those there because we can see where they're going as I'm working top down on this thing. Ding, 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 ding. And then we get into here. And you can see there is a little bit of residue in there, a little bit of grease. This is what I believe is an 8mm. Probably not. No, it's not. Of course it's not. Um, why would it be an 8mm? It's going to be an American size. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause recording about now and then go and grab the correct, um, the correct end for this. Bear me two seconds. Okay, we're back. So... Um, Correct socket size, I am using a 3 8 deep quarter inch drive socket. Whilst I was out in my tool cab, I've also grabbed hold of these. These are some picks, really cheap ones I've had for a long, long time. Just help when you're trying to get O-rings out, so you don't have to damage it with a screwdriver. And a pack of um, cotton buds. Don't know what the correct name is for these these days. Apparently they've changed the name, cotton buds, pokers, sticks, I don't know. Either way pack of earbuds as well so let's continue with this takedown so we'll move this to the off position and oh, there we go righty tighty lefty loosey and then your ratchet shows you to be an absolute muppet oh there we go came straight out so what i do know is that oh where are you gone is that that holly bush there that o-ring there is pretty bad for it and it does look a little bit dirty on there as well and that o-ring does look a little bit dry as well so i'm just going to pop that back through there that goes in there and then there is another piece in there which i didn't see in the tutorial I wonder if we can get that out. Well, we got the spring out. And it looks like there is a bolt a bit further down there. I wonder if it's that bit which is having a fit. Like all things, stick a cotton bud in it and see where we go. Oh yeah, that's pretty nasty down there, isn't it? So we'll just give that a bit of a clean out down there. Not exactly sure how clean this is supposed to be. A bit of a clean around here. Okay, so that's some of it coming off. These threads are pretty bad as well. So what we'll do, we'll uh, we'll just start rebuilding this. I'm fairly sure it's going to be that O-ring there, which is uh, causing me the the jip. Going to try to very delicately drop this back in. Oh my goodness. There we go, spring went straight back in, that's cool. So I'm going to place that to one side, I'm going to get me brass bit thing back. I'm going to take that out of there. What I'm going to do for this now, I'm just going to get my pick. And we're just going to... There we go, take that O-ring off of there. And we're going to take this O-ring off of here as well. Can do this just by squeezing it in that little bit and we can hopefully try and hook under it rather than through it there we go like that and we'll just pull it off and in we go so let's get cleaning so we've got some alcohol uh we've got the the q-tips that's what they're, they're called they get called q-tips as well so we've got these to hand. Um, when I cleaned previously, I wasn't really thorough. I just kind of slapped a bit of uh, grease on it. So that's probably what the issue is. Uh, we'll give it a bit of a give it a going over. 
then I'm very aware that the gun salve stuff is like a miracle cure as well. I think that's where I went wrong last time. I just stuck gun salve on it. But obviously with HPA and that kind of thing, you've got to be so careful with it. If you don't know what you're doing, you've really got to ask yourself, do I want to be taking this apart or should I be sending it to a pro? I am by no means a pro. Um, however, I watch a lot of YouTube and I'm fairly confident at doing a reg when it's off the tank. Reason for that is when I put it on the tank and if it starts whistling and hissing at me, I can take it off bloody quick. So this is an alcohol wipe, which I'm just going over this O-ring with. I'm fairly sure this is the one which is causing me the issue. Um, just make sure it's clean. And I'm going to just pull it through as well. And then once we're done with it, I'm going to put a bit of gun salve on it as well. Super. I'm just going to sit it on there while I clean the actual fitting just to make sure. See, that is absolutely filthy. Look at that. Filthy. So we're kind of getting to the right place now. And from what I've read is these red line regs are so finicky over a little bit of dirt like that. Um, you really can't can't you know kind of take anything for granted with them you've got to got to got to clean them which is a downside to them i suppose um i when i read up i thought red line regs were the one they were amazing um performance wise i can't say it's i felt any difference to the old ballistic uh other than obviously it, it's been creeping on me when i've not been keeping an eye on it it did it the first time and i just i thought oh it must be you know temperature related or something but it turns out it wasn't i'm gonna pull this pick through it so if i can get the back end of the thread there there we go so if we can't pull the pick right the way through this thread Come on. Uh, yeah, we're getting some bits out like that. I actually think screwing it into this would be better. Let's just take that off there. You can get a lot better drive on these things if you actually use a socket head. All I'm doing there is just kind of trying to use my nail to dig into the, the threads there as we spin around and it just pulls some dirt off. And then I'll do the reverse to back it out as well. There we go. Apologies if my nails aren't very clean. So we're not actually on the threads at that. There we go, we're on the threads and out. Yeah, so I'm still getting lots of dirt coming out of it. Really want to do my best on this so I don't have to be taking it apart again anytime soon. Right, okay, that's that done. And then what we'll do is we'll just roll this up a little bit as well. And we'll pull this through. So these things, uh, these are Fast Aid pre-injected swabs with a 70% alcohol in them. So these are absolutely fantastic. They're super cheap. A couple of quid from eBay. Uh, and I use them for everything. You can clean your barrels, you can pull into your barrels because the alcohol in them, uh, and they just clean. Um, they're not corrosive, they're not nasty. Um, the only thing you may find is if you use one of these on like a hop-up booking, you, it, you know, if you leave it in alcohol, it could dry it out over time, but it's not really the end of the world because really you're not going to be leaving your stuff dry anyway. So that's, I think, as good as that's going to get. I'm going to just polish off with a bit of a tip that is quite nice certainly got no more crud coming off it okay so what i'm gonna do now is get the old gun salve so this stuff is ganky i mean look at that blah, blah, blah. nice so we're going to use just the tiniest bit pull up this white o-ring and i'm gonna 
just mush it into my fingers a little bit so that as I'm touching the O-ring, the grease is going on, but we're not actually clumping the grease onto it. And I'm hoping that this gives it a nice, just kind of a sheen. And then as I push it back on, boop, that's a nice little friction fit into there. And we'll just, again, just take that noggin of grease off and we'll just give it a bit of a bit of a lickety split sheen on there kind of hopeful that that's going to do the job so same again tiny bit on your finger just mush it in so that you have the sheen and then just shove it all around there because that's obviously a sealing o-ring there so it kind of needs a, a bit of lubrication around it and i'm going to get it right through my fingers there as well because that's where it it kind of pushes up through on the base of that on that and then that pushes up through there and that pushes in against that so that is very much a sealing o-ring so that should be what i need for there so i'm just going to run my fingers again around that thread and the reason i'm doing that is just so that it doesn't seize so now what I've got to do is I've got to get this back in without this bottom piece falling out, which uh, kind of sounds easier than what it is. But again, what we'll do is we'll just use these long noses. So we'll just let it hang and we'll just drop it in. So that's in there. So a uh, really key bit of information right now, don't cross thread that. So what I've always done when I've been doing kind of these kind of things is if it doesn't go down easily first time, so I'm just using my fingertips here, just allowing it to try and bite in, which it's clearly not going to do because we're on camera, is what you can do is if you run it backwards, if it is slightly off, if you run it backwards, you'll feel it click as a kind of a thread goes over it. And then when it does that, you just kind of start screwing back down in a, in a straight fashion and it'll be okay. So right now... I'm only using my fingertips to uh, do this, despite them being super, super greasy. So I just need to get rid of some grease off the end of these tools. And again, these wipes are excellent to have about just to stop this from happening. So what that's actually done is that's kind of bitten. It's got its thread and it started going in of its own accord. I'm quite happy now to put that on. Because the moment you start going... On a ratchet and you start going here you don't appreciate how much force you're putting on so if you're gonna do it do it here it's delicate work we only play with small toys so be very very delicate done so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to give that a little bit of a shove shove I've got a feeling it's that. I've got a feeling it's that. I've got no idea what it is, but something's pushing down super hard on it. I don't like it. Either way. So. I mean, that moves easy. Yep, that moves absolutely fine. Right, on to the next bit, which is this one. So let's grab my O-ring hooky looper. This is absolutely janky. Look at that. I mean, the, the, the grease is hanging off this. I mean, I did really lube this, uh, but it's, it's pretty bad, to be fair. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put off. What I don't want to do, really, is I don't want to alcohol bath it and then spend hours on end just re-lubing and re-lubing and re-lubing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pull it through just so much, just so that it's clean. I mean, my fingers are very clean anyway. And I'm going to just pull off all the crud. And then I will alcohol this, because that doesn't need kind of re-lubing afterwards. That's just a metal part. 
So we'll there's a load of crud in the middle here. I mean, this is probably fairly irrelevant, this bit. But I will feel happier having done it now when I go, when I rebuild this and when I go and I take it out. I'm actually going out tomorrow. So uh, this is a very much a last minute thing for me. Um, Going to be absolutely crying if I come down and my uh, my regs crept up overnight. Don't really know what I'm going to do. Because uh, it's probably not going to be massively safe to run for the day so it'll probably probably be a very quick swap onto the spring powered SRS but tomorrow uh, we're going to be running the DMR rifle at low power so we're going to go semi only with some 0.3s 1.14 uh, joule or just below ideally uh, and we're going to look at the state of that coming out that's just disgusting um, yeah we're going to uh, Gonna really, really have a, a good day on a battle rifle tomorrow, and the reason for that is just boredom. Uh, when I took my DMR out last time, it, it was almost like cheat mode. I was just every any time I got the flank, because I had the range. I mean, as a DMR with the Kythera, it runs about one ten psi, and I I'm I'm about one point eight ish joules which i think the limit here is about 1.88 at the site i was playing and i was chucking uh fours and, and and it really was cheap mode it was just you put the red dot on them and they're gone um their range is nowhere nowhere near um i know usually dmring in the uk the, the difference is minimal so i don't know the dual difference but it's the difference normally they'll say 350 with a 0.2 to 400 with a 0.2 and absolutely, I am a huge advocate of that there's no point having a DMR at that point. Because the distance you have, you can just set your gun up well, and you'll probably range that. Uh, but when you're talking about 450, uh, it, it becomes much more of a kind of a, a, a nice number to go for, and, a, and a, a usable FPS limit. And you can really start reaching out at that point. So I just touched alcohol, so I'm just trying to wipe my fingers off a little bit now. Uh, there's a hair on that there, so uh, yeah, that's that's kind of where that where we are with it. But what I'm, what I did find was there were a couple of occasions where I got people up close and I got my pistol drawn and my pistol just didn't feel like it was enough firepower to dig me out of the situation. However, a good battle rifle would have been. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. We're going to use a good battle rifle. So we're going to pop that in now. That's I'm quite happy that that's really, really nice and shiny clean. Drop that in there, nice and square. That's on. So there's actually pressure in there. I think. Just gonna hook my line up there. And... Ah maybe this is where I went wrong before. So there was that that was pressured there. So as you as you push down on that, so that's good. That actually proves that I've got pressure into there. So when it pushes so that's that was really actually quite worthwhile doing. <laughs> Uh, so all I did there was actually vented this chamber out underneath and that just gave it that little bit of leeway just to get that down. Um, but now I can put my thumb in and I can... I've got barely anything on it. So I wonder if that was a problem before. I kind of built it with a bit of air pressure and it was all wrong. Anywho, we're going to carry on. So yeah, so tomorrow's going to be about taking the DMR rifle out at, bat at normal battle rifle kind of power limits and just having a bit of a laugh with the boys um get a bit up close and personal i have been wondering lately if the srxl is a bit too big for what i'm doing um it is long it is a big sexy dmr but i think an srl might be better and what that will also do that would give me the extra 50 mil inside the suppressor to get the inner barrel out there uh, so that i could use the stabilizer that i've got so in hindsight now an srl would have would be a good move can i bloody get my hands on one though doubt it uh 
Am I going to pay top whack just to try it out? Absolutely not, no. So um, not too sure what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it at this point. Uh, don't particularly want to try just a shorter outer barrel because the suppressor is that big it won't fit within the handguard. And I absolutely love my DTSS suppressor. Gosh, look at that. Filthy. So dirty, it could be a Christina Aguilera song. Um, so I can't really do that with it. So I'm very much thinking about possibly, I don't know, maybe getting rid of the SRXL. Um, if I buy an SRL, I could swap the gearbox straight out and put the SRL gearbox into the SRXL. Sell the SRXL as its own rifle outright. Might work. Not sure. Uh, but that's where I am. Uh, also, in my mind, I've got that MTWs are awesome. So a lot of my friends use MTWs. And I kind of want to know what the, the biz is about. But again, I absolutely love my Kai Theory in that I don't need batteries. I'm not charging any batteries tonight for saying I'm out and about tomorrow. So there are lots of advantages to having the rifles that I've got. That and I get to wind them all up as well. That I'm only shooting a G&G. &G, I'm absolutely rinsing them. So, there we go. When I last took the DMR out, it, it just seemed to settle in um, after the morning. So, I've not, it's not had a lot of use. But it kind of, you know, early doors out the gates, we were having some good shots, and then we'd get the odd flyer. Just persevered, shot and shot and shot. Got that hot rubber bedded in and bedded down. And, uh, my gosh, yeah, after that, um, about the second game of the day, I probably put about a mag or two through it. I probably put about what, maybe three hundred rounds through it. About there, three three fifty, and it just the whole thing just need, seemed to exhale, and that and that was it. Then the rest of the day, it was just whatever the red dot was on. It was gone. It was gone. It was gone. At one point, it was like target shoot, target shoot, target shoot. First BB hits, kind of, you know, as you're lining up uh, opponent number three. It was crazy. I was really, really happy with it. Uh, the range is good. The, the noise is non-existent. It was fantastic. So, that's this O-ring done. It's quite a sludgy O-ring, this one. But this one's kind of... It sits at the top. So, you kind of want it to be a little bit restrictive. In fact, I have what I've not done. Ooh, naughty me. I've not taken these threads out. I've not cleaned these threads through. So what I'm going to do to do these threads, I'm just going to kind of slide this in. And I'm going to turn it as if I'm undoing it so it pushes all the way out. And then we'll have a look at how dirty it is when it comes out. I mean, I can, I can feel some cruddy resistance. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, I could feel some cruddy resistance as I was pulling it out there, and that was just horrific. So it's definitely dirt, dirty in those threads. Which way was it going? That way. So, yeah, so... I don't know. Uh, after tomorrow's game day, I've probably got one more game day in me this year. So, um, for those of you who don't know, I have a very large amount of children um who i parent and they coming up to december obviously we have lots of parental duties around december so i will be kind of taking care of them a lot um we've had a bit of a tough few months at home uh, through home renovations and one of the kids have been ill and we've just had a bit of a tough one over the past few months so i'm going to i'm dialing the the yes, off back a bit on the weekends to do, you know, cool stuff like, you know, proper parenting stuff like, you know, seeing Santa, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, we'll build it back up again in the new year, but I just kind of feel that those guys deserve a bit more of me at the moment. Um, I did run past, though, with the wife that it's been a while since I've played any CQB. So we do have some scope to go and do some CQB, which is quite cool. Um, there is a new CQB opening up. Probably about 20 minutes down the road from me. 
uh, in a place called Long Yeaton, uh, behind a uh, children's soft play, which I know pretty well, Cyril's Nut Hut, uh, again, because of my children. So um, there's a chance that we'll get some footage out of there fairly soon, uh, as well as the normal skirmish that we play as well. So uh, it's all looking pretty damn good, if I'm honest with you at the moment. Um, one thing I just don't have is time, and I don't have a lot of it at the moment. Uh, again, not that I don't enjoy what I'm doing or can't be arsed with it, just... When you have a lot of things on, a lot of children like I do, it's very difficult to commit time into Airsoft, because Airsoft is a hobby. I get to do it in my spare time, and I can only do it if I have spare time, of which I don't normally. So, this is a very good example of my little trick of winding back until it clunks. So, what I'll do is I'll just hold it up here a bit. So, spin, 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 spin. And... There. It went clunk. Then you can roll it back in and you know that you'll be on on point with the threads there so what i'm not going to do with this is tighten it all the way down i'm just going to tighten it to there so i just started to feel a tiny bit of resistance and i'm going to stop at that and then we're going to pull this out as well this is just a weather cap but um while we're cleaning everything off we may as well do this as well See if we can get in there and pull out the O-ring. So as I'm actually speaking to you, I'm saying I'm going out tomorrow, this kind of thing. By the time this video actually airs, it will have been probably two or three weeks ago. <laughs> um, so this is chances. So, uh, yeah. Uh, cool if you met me <laughs> when I was out yesterday. Uh, and that's why I was probably swearing using uh, my bolt-action sniper rather than my super cool DMR. Could even use the DMR as DMR, I just don't have the weighted ammo for it. When I'm DMRing, I'm, I absolutely, I think fours are my absolute favourite. I'm just struggling at the moment to get any heavyweight ammo together. Uh, three sixes are okay, they're probably the lightest I'd use, but three sixes I tend to use in standard battle rifle, If I can, and again, if I can get my hands on them. Uh, heavyweight ammo at the moment has been an absolute pig to get, it really has been. So... It's a nightmare, and when you can get it, it's just hideously expensive. So, to give you some kind of rough pricing examples, um, last time I bought three sixes, I paid twenty two, twenty three pounds for a bottle of three thousand three hundred of them. That same bottle now is thirty two ninety nine, uh, and that's before we talk about shipping. Uh, for fours, so like I very much enjoy using in my DMRs, um, fours when I last bought them were fourteen ninety five for the bottle. Um, they then crept to fourteen ninety five plus four ninety five for postage. I've now seen them re advertised at twenty pounds plus the postage. So it's ten quid, ten quid on a bottle of BBs that was costing fifteen quid. So. I don't know who's doing the maths in airsoft land, but inflation's meant to be about 10%. Not fucking two-thirds. So, um, yeah, heavyweight ammo is just a nightmare, and don't even get me started on sniper BBs. Uh, sniping used to be viable at one point. Um, you know, for a bottle of 1,043s I use sorry, sorry, for a bag of 1,043s decent quality ones used to be about 20 quid and it went to 22 and 23 and 24 and then I got introduced to 4.8s and they were 25 quid I can't buy 4.8s now for love and money for anything less than 30 quid it's like 32 quid for a bag of 4.8s well why, why would I use those that's just fucking mental um so yeah it's, uh, it's just a bit mental, really, at the moment for pricing and that kind of thing. So I'm a bit begrudged to do it. I've got a lot of 2.5s. I've got a lot of 2.5 tracers. I've got a lot of 3s at the moment. Uh, and I've got probably about two to three days worth of 4.8s left. So I'm probably going to use up what I've got now with before I buy ammo again. Um and hope that the, the market pricing calms down. 
So that's it. You've kind of watched me rebuild this regulator now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover that up because I absolutely know my look. So I'll put something on this desk and I'll hit that on it absolutely everywhere. We're going to get the HPA bottle, which is currently sitting at two and a half thousand. I'm just going to top that bad boy up. So I do have a, a, a dive tank next to me here. Um, I have a part of when I did the regulator last time. So I fully emptied my bottle just so that I could actually get at the bottle and you know have a play with the fittings on it. Uh, and it absolutely ruined, ruined my air in there. It just, the bottle was no good. It needed completely refilling again. Just slowly filling it right now. Prefer slow fills to fast fills for that heat control. Venting the line off. And ash comes. And then we put the nice protecting end on. Cover that. Cover that. Right. Bottle is up to about 3,000. So. I'm going to take the tank cover off. So one of the other things I'm going to do is just have a wee look. So obviously not going to do anything with this thing because this is 3000 at the moment we are in date um we're two years into the five-year life of this bottle with it being a steel bottle i'm not going to get it tested i'm just going to uh, swap it but i'm just going to have a quick inspection of this top o-ring up here which looks pretty okay we have had some leakage issues in the past but i think that was down to it not being quite on right I will spin this down and then we'll listen for it going Chitter. and it always makes me jump I hate dealing with HPA for that reason alone so it's a little bit of resistance okay so nothing screamed at me nothing went kabang uh, what I am going to do I am now just going to turn my reg up to about 40 psi's bit of resistance now there we go Ooh. Okay, so I can see that is already creeping hideously. Let's just stick the line on that. So if this thing's creeping like mad, I am going to absolutely panic. Okay. Drop that in, and up we go again. straight up again there's something wrong with that i know exactly what's wrong with that oh my goodness bonk we know exactly what's wrong with that don't we so i've just seen what's wrong with it but uh i will give some points out if you can name what's wrong with it right now spaces didn't put the bloody spaces in, did we? Wow, that was a silly thing to do. So what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to take this bloody thing apart. When it's like that, we're going to take it off the bottle. 
There we go, that's the sound I like. That's the sound which means it's got nothing in it. Just put the bottle down to one side. Well, that certainly explains why it didn't work. Um, yeah, that was a bit of a uh, faux pas. I'm kind of glad that I noticed I made that mistake now. I'm kind of glad that I tested it straight away. Um, assembly technique is obviously fantastic. So I've actually missed too much out of the assembly, thankfully. Um, so these spaces do come in a particular order. Uh... I'm feeling incredibly stupid for having missed it, but it's one of those incredibly stupid for having missed it, but kind of thankful that I, I caught it. You know, you could I could have spent a long time restripping this and going, oh my god, what's the problem? So what I'm going to do here, I've got my stack of spaces now. I've remembered to put them on. I'm going to put the end of the center punch. So I'm just going to hold them, a bit like what you do with the Mentos thing. So I'm just kind of holding it. So what? It's a shame you can't see this. Um, so I'm just going to let go of them. And then wiggle it around a bit. And they're in. So all I did there was I kind of, if you imagine this is side on, I kind of went, I was holding them and I stood it up. And then got the punch in the middle of the pin, let go and gravity just pulled those spaces down. So those spaces are absolutely where they need to be. And now we're going to put this this cap on because obviously now you're actually paying attention uh and I'm watching the moron do it right so this time I'm hoping there's not going to be a lot of creep because if there is um I need new reg probably could be fixed but I'm not in the game of spending hours and hours and hours fixing stuff that's Al's job if it doesn't work now this will be going to well. Oh, there we go. Resistance early. That's down. Pressure's picked up a little bit straight away. And what we'll do is we'll just... And I've got the cap off, but that's fine. We'll, uh, we'll just spin it in. The pressure probably picked up because of that bottom chamber. So, there we go. I'm going to turn that to 40, just so there's some pressure in it to hold it. And I'm just going to sit and watch it for a minute. So, it definitely hasn't crept like it did without those spaces in. Uh, leaving the spaces off is not the weight-saving um, opportunity that you think it is. And for me, that is creeping. Or am I being super, super pedantic? I'm not sure. So, for me, it's kind of at 40. I suppose I'm holding the bottle like that, going, oh, it's creeping, or it's not. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cap on at that. And I'm going to hope for the best. So when I prep my kit for tomorrow now, what I will do is I know that that's at 40. That's a sensible low number that I can store it at. And if it's above 40 tomorrow morning, then the DMR won't be going with me, which is a shame. So let's get that one buttoned up. Oop, like that. Get that pulled down. Pull that down. Oh, crow. And we're at 40. There we go. So, that is how you strip the red line reg and you lube that little, clean that little o-ring thing at the bottom. I'm quite hopeful that the whole strip and clean stuff will have fixed it. Um, I'm also quite hopeful that relubing it will have fixed it properly. Uh, and I'm also quite certain that having put that stack of shims in is going to make it work really well as well. I think they might be needed. So thank you very, very much if you've stuck with me for this long. I know this has been a quite a long video, but just nice to kind of talk sometimes, I suppose. So um, please do hit that like button. If you've made it this far, please drop me a comment and say, Steve, I made it towards the end. 
uh, I'll figure out some way of thanking you. And uh, if you are still with me, please do hit that sub button uh, and help me on my YouTube journey. Thank you very much. Um, if you're on the field tomorrow where I am, I'll catch you there. Hopefully get to talk to you, hopefully get to shoot you, and hopefully you will shoot me multiple times. And failing that, I will catch you in the next one.